Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Paper Crafting Saturday. Whoops. Here we go, get our titles fixed. I'm gonna continue with the scrap busting journal today. So I've added quite a quite a few interior decorations here and next Saturday I'm going to be doing a flip through of what I've done so far in the scrap busting journal so if you're somebody who's been in the workshop or who is following along make sure you put next Saturday at 12 noon on your calendar for the flip through because it's going to be a lot of fun and today I'm going to do a really um uh involved kind of a little more complicated page but not too complicated you'll be able to follow along and it's going to involve the ladybug builder punch and um, and I also have a lot of foliage <coughs> dies out so um, I've got the tailor-made tags I've also got dainty delight so you can see all of these die sets have lots and lots of leaves. Now you can use any kind of foliage die sets that you may have, but you're going to want to um, cut out a number of things ahead of time. So Dainty Delight, I've got Natural Prints. Okay, this is the one that has that really beautiful wreath. I've got Forever Flourishing. This is a retired set, but it's one that I keep nearby because it's got so many different leaves on it. And then I've also got Meadow. And, um, and Meadow is still available. And it has this very pretty kind of a ferny, leafy shape for the foreground and, um, and a number of other things. So those are, the, those are the tools that I'm going to be using today. I've already gone ahead and I've done some prep work and I've created a base so I just um, I cut this to the size of the page in the scrapbooking scrap busting journal and this measures five by eight, let me get my bigger ruler out here, five by eight, and then what I've done is I've just added a, a slightly smaller piece and I've just stitched around the edge for some added interest, and I'm using my gold metallic thread for that. The colors I've pulled out are all different tones of green and um, and then there is uh, I've got a piece of the wisteria wonder I think this is coastal cabana I have lost lagoon soft succulent pear pizzazz garden green old olive and evening evergreen any kind of uh, broad assortment of greens that you have will be fine. And I've gone ahead and I've cut out all these different pieces of foliage. Okay, and look how beautiful all those colors are together. Just gorgeous. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot of gluing on here today and then when I'm about halfway through I'm going to add my ladybug and there's going to be a really cute mechanism that's going to be added to um, make this an interactive card Let me just check my settings, make sure you can see and hear me. And there we go. And there's, there's, a, there's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Good morning. And Carol, good morning. Ginger says, finally catching you live. A little bit later today, Ginger. And Vicki, oh, 
And Vicki, yes. Okay, excellent. So we've got a, a number of people here watching. I was a little bit late today because I didn't want you to have to watch me cutting out all of these die cuts. And it took a little bit longer um, because I made a lot so that I'd have a broad assortment of things to choose from. And I think I want to get my tweezers out for this because we're going to be doing a lot of fussy cutting. Where are my tweezers? There they are. Okay. This is just going to be layer after layer of color and texture. So a lot of texture on this card. And for those of you who are in the watercolor landscape sketching workshop, you will understand, or you'll, you'll soon understand, the concept behind some of these colors, because these are, there's going to be a lot of different landscape colors that I'm using here to, um, to give the card a lot of perspective. Okay, I got a little scrap there. Pull that off. Okay, so I'm oops, just layering this up. Get it back into place. There we go. And let's see what else we've got here. This is the um, the beautiful. I love the um, I love this one. This is from Dainty Delights, and it's just this kind of vining, leafy shape, and it's so delicate. These these die, all of these dies are extremely delicate and have some beautiful, very fine stems and leaves so that you can get a, a really wonderful effect. I'm just going to have this sweeping up something like that. And let's see if we have another one like that. This is this color is Lost Lagoon, and I'm loving that. Get some more of that. We had some freezing weather here last week that caused some of the the tender, tiny new grape leaves to wither. It won't hurt the plant. It'll it'll generate new leaves. But it was just just a warning. Where where I live, it's really not safe to put out any tender plants before Memorial Day, because it's not unusual at all for us to have a, a frost like that. And um, and so. I have been getting some some new plants, getting ready for the season, but I'm not putting them out just yet. Let's see, kind of like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna trim my my wreath shape. to the way I want it here. So anyway, so I think, um, you know, Memorial Day is just around the corner and I will be 
changing my my uh, video hours slightly so I'm thinking that next week will be the last paper crafting Saturday I'm going to move it to um, another day during the week and I will make an announcement about that so that you know when you'll be able to catch me live and instead of going live three times a week I'm going to only go live twice a week so I'm sure you all have uh, lots to do during the summer season as well. What I'm going to um, do though is I'm going to aim to create some kind of a project that I will create a video of during the week so that you will have um, access to it during the during the weekend when I think a lot of people have time to craft. So that's that's the idea anyway. Um, you all can tell me what days of the week are best for your crafting and I can try to schedule my videos accordingly. So if you have any thoughts about what days work best for you, please let me know. Just um, post it in the comments below and I will see what I can do. Okay, look how, look how pretty. I love this wreath shape this is um let me check i think it's made from the um yeah the nature or the natural prints die set and it's this wreath here it makes the most beautiful foliage And I, I don't know, you know, you can always watch the videos whenever you, when you have time, you can catch the replay, but does, does anybody have any thoughts about what time of day you like to watch the videos? I've been, um, I've been going live at noon, Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Now I'm going to keep my Wednesday and then it's the other day that um, I'm trying to figure out when the best time would be. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. Looking very lush, beautiful colors. Just give that a little bit of a burnish. Make sure everything's stuck down well. After the video, I will list the different supplies that I've used. So you don't have to write anything down. You'll be able to check the supply list and see what's see what's available for this sort of thing. Who's this nice long one? Let's add that. Gonna cut it right there. I'm looking forward to using this Lost Lagoon color a lot going forward. I think it's so pretty. Right, and then 
just going to trim this little point off. Okay, so now I'm going to um, figure out my ladybug. I have a strip of cardstock here that measures about, I think it's uh, about five and a half inches by one inch. And what I did was I used the tailor made tag to just cut out one end of it so I only I only ran a partial piece of the die through the machine to, so that it didn't cut it off at the end so this is going to be my the base for the mechanism of my ladybug and then for my ladybug I'm going to cut her out in a number of, of different colors. I'm going to start with the Evening Evergreen. I've got Pear Pizzazz. Now you could use Old Olive or you don't even have to use green. You can use any color you like really. And then this is Soft Sea Foam. Okay, so there are my pieces. So I've got I've got a, a light, a medium, and a dark color. It really doesn't matter what family of colors you use. And so I'm going to use the dark color for her head. And then I'm going to use the medium color. I'm just going to cut around that. I'm just going to cut that in half. So those are going to be my wings. And then I may have to cut this down. These are going to be the secondary wings, but I might have to adjust that a little bit. So let's take a look at what we've got here. I'm going to score at about two inches. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going, to, I'm going to score it again so I have a nice crisp fold. So this time I'm going to score about um, half an inch further and I'm just kind of um, I'm not doing this very scientifically, okay? I just want a little kind of a jog like that. Okay, so that moves has a little bit of movement. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my middle. Let me zoom you in so you can see this a little bit better. So I'm going to find my middle and I'm just going to fold down this corner. Something like that. 
Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm trying to keep the center even. I'm going to open the whole thing up. And now I'm going to pop that corner in. Like so. So I get, oh, I'm sorry. Make sure I'm on camera here. So I'm getting this kind of a point configuration. Okay. I'm not sure that cardstock is the best material for this. Um, you may want to do a little bit of experimentation, see what else might work well. Um, but for now, I'm going to go with this. So ultimately, what you want to end up with is something that looks like that. Okay, so there's your, there's your point. There are your folded in kind of darts, right? And then you're going to take your tag end, which is going to be the top, and you're going to fold that so that you end up with something that looks like this and moves like that. Okay? That's the idea. Now, the surfaces that we're going to be gluing the wings to are going to be these two inner triangular pieces. That's what's forming the pop-up. Pop but before we get there, we're going we're gonna to add our ladybug's head. So I'm just going to cut that off. And, and this is the evening evergreen, so the darker of the colors that you may choose to use. I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on there. Get the antennas. Add that right at my fold. Okay, and then my middle tone, these are the, the two wings that I cut in half. They're going to come together. on on the on the top plane of these two triangles so i'm just going to put a touch of glue in this corner and what i want to have happen here is for this wing to line up down the center of my strip, okay? So I want that to go parallel to the edges of my strip, okay? And that is, I want to get the excess glue out of there. You don't, do not want excess glue, so I'm just going to wipe that away. And then the same thing on this other side. Just a tiny bit of glue. You don't want to make a mess here because otherwise it will gum up the mechanism. And then the same thing on the opposite side. I'm just placing that so it meets up. Hold that for just a moment. And 
And then finally, I have my lighter colored leaves. Now I just want to check. I may have to cut these down a little bit. I think I do. So I'm just, I'm going to trim these down. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put them together and I'm just going to make more of a narrow kind of a shape like that. Still a little big. These are going to be much smaller, so you're just going to, the, you, you don't want them to be so big that they impair the mechanism. So let's try that. And put a dab of glue, like so. And then this is going to get stuck onto the bottom triangle. Hold that for just a moment. Let that get set up. Okay, so now you have something. Oops, that one came off. It's not dry yet. Just give it a minute to dry. I'm going to get my glue eraser out and make sure that I don't have any bits of glue. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to go. So there, there's the configuration completely open. These little side ones go in to form our ladybug like so. And then we have this movement with the wings opening and closing. I'm going to go ahead and give that a good burnishing. And now what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to trim this excess. We don't need all that. And this portion of the strip is going to be adhered down. So I get my back in here. I want the tab to be inside the border of the card here. So I just want to make sure that 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 this doesn't go outside the border of the base. I'm just going to hold that into place for a minute. Okay, there's my bug. And I also, I want to disguise my, my tag a little bit. So I'm going to get a piece of matching die cut. I'm going back to that pretty ferny one again. I'm just going to cut off a little piece okay. 
blot that sort of add that to my tag and let me see if I want another color on here I think I do Told you it was going to be a long one today. When I when I write bring coffee, <laughs> it means it might take a little bit longer than usual. Okay, so that I think helps to disguise my tab so it doesn't look so obvious. Now later I will go back and find some embellishments to put on my uh, ladybug's wings. But for now I want to keep moving and finish up the bottom of my panel here. So let's see what other beautiful colors we have here. This is the um, pear pizzazz that I think would be really pretty and that would also help to disguise my bug so that the bug wasn't so obvious all at once. So I think I'll, I'll layer that through there, something like that. For those of you out there who have your scrap busting journal made, um, please post your journals in the bookmaking group so that everybody can see. I'm going to be um, having a, a Zoom soon where everybody can share what they've done and their ideas and we'll have a little party little online party so uh, get ready for that announcement and if you haven't been working on your scrap busting journal get to it because um, we're going to be moving on to the next phase and um, so you so now's your the time to get caught up on that There we go. Okay. And I think I'll put this one over here. I love I love these die cuts. This one still has a little piece in it. Let's get that out. Some of the, the punches were, would work nicely for this too, like the uh, bow punch would be nice. So if, um, if you'd like, you could, you could use that. And as always, of course, I would love to see what you do. We all learn from one another and uh, we all are inspired by one another. So please don't be shy about posting what you're doing in the Dandelion Paper Pals group. If you're not a member of the private Dandelion Paper Pals group, all you have to do is make a comment below here so I know, so I know who you are, and then go ahead and find the group on Facebook and I will let you in. Okay, we're just about done here, I think. 
I do want to add this. I, I just love this kind of, um, this is the, this is that vining leaf from Dainty Delights, and it's just so delicate. I think it adds so much elegance to the, to the overall feeling of the design. I'm not going to use the whole thing, so I'm just going to put glue part way down. This one over here. So the um the Broody Hens, Mamacita, and Oregano have been sitting side by side on their clutch of eggs. And I'm so glad that they're working together because it was so cold the other night. And, um, and so they will help to keep each other warm and they'll also help to keep make sure that the eggs stay nice and warm when the temperatures dip. But anyway, they have been sitting on those eggs now for 20 days, or 21 days. What is today? 20 days. And it takes 21 to 22 days for a bantam chicken egg to hatch. So I am expecting to see baby chicks tomorrow. And they will continue to hatch until um, probably Monday and uh, so that's going to be really exciting and of course I will bring my camera up to the coop so you all can see those those beautiful little babies okay I like that there just a few more pieces and then we'll be ready to mount the page in the book. I want to make sure I get all these little corners so they don't lift up. Okay, and then something else in this corner, maybe two something else's. Let's see what we've got here. Um, let's see. Yeah. 
Okay, let's get, get one more of these. Who else has chickens out there? Do you raise baby chicks? I'll tell you what, there is a world of difference between letting the broody hens raise the baby chicks than having to hatch them out in an incubator. It's like, it's like day and night. So not only do the do the broody hens do all the work and do an excellent job, but they also raise those babies and teach them. They teach them how to behave. They teach them how to survive. And, um, and it makes all the difference in the way those baby chicks behave. So one of the reasons why I've got so many adorable, friendly chickens is because the broody hens have, have taught them everything they need to know, not only about their environment and dealing with the other chickens, but also about me and my schedule and, and how to act around me. It's really, it's really qu quite amazing. And I've had chickens now for over 16, 17 years. And as a result, all those, all those generations of chickens have reached a very um, advanced kind of level of, of cooperation. It's, it's, um, it's quite remarkable. One of the things that I want to do this summer is figure out how to bring my camera and my video set up out into the garden so that you can actually see me paint while I'm outside in nature. And um, I haven't quite figured that out yet, but that's going to be the next thing. But here, here is my cute page. Let me zoom you out a little bit so you can see better. Clean up this mess. I've got lots of little bits here left over that I can use if I want to make some minor adjustments. But there is my little ladybug in her meadow. And she's able to flash her wings and take off. Okay, so I hope that gives you some ideas. I think it's really cute. I'm just really loving all of these colors. I just think that um, all of these beautiful tones. I mean, really, this this if this isn't a uh, a great vote for all of the beautiful colors that are available to us with these card stocks and uh, embellishments and trim and so forth and so on. I don't know what is because I just think that that is so gorgeous. All right, let me see if there's any questions. Uh, let me come over here. Oh, lots more people. Hi, everybody. Wow. Oh my gosh. We've got a full crew here today. There's Linda. Hi, Linda. It's a little bit rainy here, Linda. How is it by your house? It's, uh, we're, we're not outside today. Um, and then there's Cheryl from Smoky, Montana. Yeah. I saw your post about, what was it? A, um, an air filter or something that you had to use. So sorry about that. Um, and there's Sandra. And Vicki says, we usually eat at noon, so a little later. Okay. All right. Good. Good, good. And 
Ginger says the opposite. Earlier in the day would be better for me. Well, maybe we can find a balance. Um, maybe we'll do one day a little later one, and one day a little earlier. And Kit says, I love the concept of multiple layers of different colored die cuts. Lush, yes, very lush, very lush, lots of texture. And uh, Kelly says she likes to watch the video during the day rather than the evening, okay? Well, you know what, uh, Kelly, it's, that's actually really important because here in my studio, I'm working with North Light, and so I'm only going to be painting and creating during daylight hours because I want to be able to take advantage of this gorgeous light that I have. Um, Linda likes the colors. Yeah, they're stunning. And yeah, she says it's overcast where she is. It might be raining soon. And Abby, hi Abby. Abby likes the project. Okay, everybody. Well, I know I've kept you here for a long time today, but I thought that that was super cute. It's actually... You know, it looks very complex because of all the different layers, but really it's very simple. You're just doing the same thing over and over again for the foliage. And, um, you know, the trickiest part is just making this fold for the mechanism and getting those. I'll open this up so you can take a screenshot if you like, but it looks like that. Okay. I think you can see that pretty well. Just just uh, play with a scrap piece of paper. You'll get it. It's not that hard. And then I think I'm going to add a little um, ribbon or something there. And I'm going to put some sparkles on my ladybug's wings. So you'll see that in the final thumbnail. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, I hope you're able to get outside into the beautiful garden and see all the magical things that are happening there. Um, I will be back on Monday for Marvelous Monday, and I think by then I should have a pretty clear idea of what the schedule is going to be like going forward for the summer. So, um, And I will also post it on the page. So stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.